When 10 filmmakers were called to testify before the House Un-American Activities Committee, they did not know that it would change the function of rights and responsibilities in American expression. They did not know that their work would be erased from the American conscience for decades to come, or that the work of thousands of directors, actors, and screenwriters would never be known due to political entanglements and fear-based bias. The Hollywood Tens hearing changed the American concept of constitutional rights and responsibility in times of threat. Their 1947 conviction served as a precedent for a new perspective on the Constitution, one prioritizing public fear at the expense of individuals' legal rights and responsibilities. The House Un-American Activities Committee, or HUAC, was founded in 1938. In its early years, the committee worked to eliminate subversive elements in government specifically Communists and Roosevelt's New Deal programs. During the Great Depression, the Communist Party was seen as a viable alternative to the political and economic systems of the day. Many Americans, especially unemployed workers and artists, joined the party in hope of a better future. Throughout World War II, the Communist Party became known as patriotic for its anti-fascist, pro-war stance. Thus, anti-communist action was not widely appreciated by the wartime public. However, the end of World War II brought an enormous change in American attitudes about communism. Both the Soviet Union and the United States had emerged as victors from the war. Now the question arose, which country would emerge more powerful? As both nations sought to extend their spheres of influence, Cold War fear swept the nation. HUAC became a standing committee in 1945, expanding its scope of investigation from the U.S. government to the nation as a whole. Anti-communist propaganda films and radio programs were widely distributed, and popular support for HUAC reached enormous levels. The committee's harsh tactics, combined with its public support, made HUAC a virtually unquestionable institution. Calling the House Un-American Activities Committee to order, Chairman J. Parnell Thomas of New Jersey opens an inquiry into possible communist penetration of the Hollywood film industry. The committee is seeking to determine if Red Party members have reached the screen with subversive propaganda. In 1947, Hollywood found itself under the spotlight produced by its own propaganda. The Hollywood Reporter, a film trade newspaper, published a list of suspected communist sympathizers in the Screenwriters Guild. From this list, HUAC subpoenaed many prominent screenwriters, directors, and actors. Of those filmmakers called before the committee, ten chose not to give information and were named unfriendly witnesses. These ten men were all influential screenwriters and directors, people who had taken interest in the ideals of the Communist Party, but who had never been deeply involved in communist organizations. Among them were Dalton Trumbo, who later wrote Spartacus, and Ring Wardner Jr., who eventually wrote the scripts for MASH. Are you a member of the Communist Party? Or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? It's unfortunate and tragic that I have to teach this committee the that's basic not principles the of Americanism. Question, that's not the question. The question is, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I'm framing my answer in the only way in which any American citizen can frame his then you denied, the question then you, which invades his absolutely invades then his Then you life. deny to, you you refuse to answer that question, is that correct? I have told you that I will All offer right. my beliefs, my affiliations and excuse everything else to the, the, the American story. public and they will know where I stand as they do from what I have written. Stand away I have from the stand from, for Americanism for many years and I shall stand away from the stand fight for the Bill of Rights which I'll you are trying to take destroy. this man away from the stand. Have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I believe I have the right to be confronted with any evidence which supports this question. I should like to see what you have. Oh, well, you would. Yes. Well, you will pretty soon. The hearing continued for nine days, during which the Hollywood Ten maintained that the investigation violated their constitutional rights. Under American law, the Hollywood Ten could not be held guilty of any prosecutable offense due to their political beliefs, or be made to give a self-incriminating answer. All ten refused to answer questions about their political affiliations, citing their Fifth Amendment rights, as well as the First Amendment rights that made the investigation illegal. Yet ultimately, the same constitutional rights that the ten spoke out for were what landed them in prison. By maintaining their right to free belief, the Hollywood Ten had been called before HUAC, and by maintaining their right against self-incrimination, they had been convicted for their failure to answer. 
On the 24th of November, 1947, the Hollywood Ten were sentenced to one year in prison for contempt of Congress. The Hollywood Ten's hearing set the precedent for decades of artistic and political repression in the United States. Thousands of writers, directors, and actors were silenced by industry-wide blacklists. Red Channels, an influential compilation of Hollywood professionals thought to be communist sympathizers, was responsible for the blacklisting of artists such as Aaron Copeland, Pete Seeger, and Lena Horne. The blacklist lasted until 1960, when Dalton Trumbo took credit for writing Spartacus. I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! In the famous I'm Spartacus scene, Trumbo dramatized the solidarity of blacklisted filmmakers who refused to name names before HUAC, knowing that it would cost them their livelihood and reputation. However, the legacy of the Hollywood Ten extends far beyond the film industry. It extends into the lives of every American citizen today. The Hollywood Ten displayed what it means to be a citizen under the United States Constitution the rights and responsibilities of being American. According to the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, one of a citizen's responsibilities is to defend the Constitution. As American citizens, both the Hollywood Ten and the House Un-American Activities Committee held this responsibility. The Hollywood Ten, while holding communist beliefs, fulfilled their responsibilities by defending their constitutional rights while HUAC neglected their responsibility by infringing upon the rights of others in the name of democracy. Yet it was the Hollywood Ten who were punished, while HUAC remained a fixture of patriotism for the next ten years. The American people accepted this discrepancy. Eager for protection from the communist threat, many were willing to overlook the Constitution in the name of national security and freedom. Yet America's freedom is derived not from its supremacy related to other nations, but from the inalienable liberties of its citizens. The questions of liberty, security, and the Constitution still apply to us today. In the weeks after the September 11th bombings, Congress passed the Patriot Act, a law allowing the expanded surveillance of American citizens based on their suspected beliefs. Under Section 215, the Act allows the U.S. government to collect any evidence from a private citizen, regardless of whether or not said citizen is a suspected terrorist. This violates the citizens' Fourth Amendment rights, which prevent government searches without reasonable suspicion. Also under Section 215, the Act essentially allows the investigation of any citizen for their exercise of free speech, violating their First Amendment rights. According to the Bush administration, the Patriot Act served as an essential step in defeating terrorism. Bush's address concerning the Patriot Act reflected the fear that fueled the passage of such legislation. We've seen the enemy in the murder of thousands of innocent, unsuspecting people. They recognize no barrier of morality. They have no conscience. The Patriot Act still stands as law today. Actions taken under the Patriot Act, such as those of the National Security Administration's PRISM program, are still legal. Through the PRISM program, the NSA can covertly collect data flow from virtually any internet source. This includes American civilians' emails and internet data, as well as foreign citizens' data. In these instances, the continuing violation of Americans' liberty has been defended on the basis of national security. My assessment and my team's assessment uh, was that they help us prevent terrorist attacks. How are we striking this balance between the need to keep the American people safe and uh, our concerns about privacy? because there are some trade-offs involved. It is important to remember that as American citizens, our freedom is our national security. Our constitutional rights are inalienable, and like the Hollywood Ten, we have a responsibility to protect them and our nation's freedoms. No fear, no threat, no kind of pressure should cause us to ignore these rights. Though our current conception of constitutional application may be distorted, it is truly our responsibility to ensure the protection of democratic rights in times of fear.